Sports.com to check out this list. Our Cody Benjamin ranking the top 10 NFL coaches heading into the 2024 season. There's been some controversy about some of these lists that we're going to get into in a minute, but no controversy when it comes to number one. Andy Reid, the Super Bowl champion, topping the list. Sean McVay at number two. Kyle Shanahan. Uh, we're going to get into it because Lee Jay here is on set with us. Lee Jay has some different opinions, Tommy. Yeah, I mean, this is the great thing about having rankings and lists. It's extremely subjective, <laughs> and Lee Jay has his take on who the top 15 in this case should be, and we're going to break down a handful of them right here on CBS Sports HQ. We're also happy to be joined by Mike Renner to discuss Lee Jay's list, so we're yeah. in for a nice, healthy conversation <laughs> here midday uh, later in the work week. Okay, so we're going to skip one and go with two. So Kyle Shanahan yeah. at two for you, Lee Jay. My question to you is how close the Andy Reid at the top and how much of a gap between two and three? Oh, it's a massive gap. But when you talk about Super Bowl rings and Andy Reid having three, there's a significant gap, kind of like there's a significant gap between Patrick Mahomes and every other quarterback in the NFL, but Kyle Shanahan has run the NFC for the last half decade. I mean, Tommy and Haley, you can practically pencil the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. They've been to four out of the last five, and yes, I know he hasn't won the ring, but he's been to two Super Bowls in that in that term, and he is one of the best offensive gurus in all of football. And one thing that people aren't talking about, he's lost two defensive coordinators to head coaching jobs, so you know how hard that is to overturn, lose your coordinator, and yet your defense still plays top five defense every single year and I love that he delegates that on that side of the ball a lot of coaches they struggle with letting those powers go but Kyle Shanahan does it now I know there were question marks in the Super Bowl about Steve Wilkes and potentially calling a timeout in overtime but he has shown that he delegates that to the defensive side so it was crazy that people were giving me gruff about putting Kyle Shanahan at two when he's run the NFC for the last half decade I mean again for the last five years, they've been to four of the five NFC Championship games and two Super Bowl appearances. To me, this is probably the last year of that run. When you look at it, Brock Purdy probably going to get a new deal. Trent Williams getting older. Even George Kittle will be 31 in the season. They went and got uh, Leonard Floyd in the offseason to, I think, uh, maximize this opportunity. I think this will be the last year of that run. Yeah, I'm with you, Jay, uh, with him being at number two. I think it's a closer gap to number one, though, than what really? you even said, because yeah. you talk about those two Super Bowls. If you flip the quarterbacks in those two Super Bowls, you set, hit the nail on the head with the gap between Patrick Mahomes and everyone else is why the Kansas City Chiefs came out on top in those two matchups. Kyle Shanahan went there with two different quarterbacks, and you go back, the graphic said two out of the last seven. He's been to three out of the last eight. He was the OC for the Atlanta Falcons Ooh. back when they were in that one, and we're close on the doorstep as well. So he was so close to being the surefire number one on this list. If plays bounce different ways in all three of those Super Bowls, it's not even a question. So to put anyone else at number two, in my opinion, is just, I, I think it's, I just think it's wrong. I think every other team in the NFL would gladly trade their head coach for Kyle Shanahan, given his track record. It's just unimpeachable. And you talked about the head coaching or the coaches that he's lost on both sides of the football. It just doesn't matter because Kyle Shanahan is that good of an offensive and defensive mind. He has his hands in the mix uh, on that side of the football as well. That's why they've, you know, relatively kept the same scheme with a bunch of different defense coordinators on that side. I'm so glad that we got to start off this segment with some harmony. Because, uh, <laughs> here's where it's going to get a little bit fun. We jump ahead to who Lige has at number seven, Jim Harbaugh rejoining the NFL after uh, some successful time at the college ranks. He was very successful with the 49ers Nervous. when he was initially in the league. We know he made it to the Super Bowl, lost to his brother, so obviously that'll be on the list. Uh, but Mike, this is where the discrepancy comes from because Lige has Matt LaFleur ranked above Jim Harbaugh at six. You think that Harbaugh should be higher. Tell us why. I do, and I wouldn't even argue with him as high as three on this list, truthfully. Oh Just given his track record, not only in the NFL, where he has the fifth highest winning percentage of all time, the highest of any active coach in the NFL, but then also he goes to college and does an unprecedented run at Michigan, winning the national title this past year. No one has done that in modern football history. You know, you talk, you go back to the 60s, 70s. That was a thing where guys would bounce between college and the NFL. That doesn't happen anymore. That just speaks to the character that Jim Harbaugh has, the way he's able to lead men 
in the locker room and you saw it with how quickly he turned around the 49ers and I'd be scared if I'm in the AFC West if I'm not the Kansas State Chiefs obviously but the fact that he's going to turn around this Los Angeles Chargers team very quickly because that's just what he does so yeah Jim Harbaugh obviously a small track record only four seasons of coaching in the NFL but there really is nothing to suggest that this guy doesn't know ball inside and out and that there's very few guys in the NFL right now that I would want over him as a head coach. Yeah, Mike, I agree with you. I went back and forth whether to put him above Matt LaFleur or not. So I, I'm not arguing about that, but as high as three, you got him in, in front of me. Mike Tomlin, Sean McVay, guys that have actually won Super Bowls. And you stated it, right? The sample size isn't as big for Jim Harbaugh in the NFL, only four seasons. But you stated it, Mike. He has turned around programs no matter where he's been. He goes to San Diego, right? Back-to-back 11-win season. Goes to Stanford. Struggled the first two years. Then went 8-5 and five, and then 12-1. and one. Comes to the NFL in San Francisco. The year before he got there, they were 6-10. and 10. He won over 12 games his first year and went to the Super Bowl. So this is a guy who went to three straight NFC Championship games. And we're not even talking about Michigan, where he turned things around there, where I believe they were 5-7 and seven and went 10-3 and three in his first year. And he ultimately wins the championship at Michigan. I love the way that his, he coaches, his mindset, right? He's going to bring a physical tenacity to that team. There's going to be a philosophy change. They're going to be physical. They're going to run the football. They're going to play hard, tough-nosed defense. I can't wait to see this team. I love where he's at on my list. I don't mind moving him up maybe above Matt LaFleur, but I can't put him above two other coaches that have won Lombardi trophies. So, Lige, right behind Jim Harbaugh's Dan Campbell. And if we were doing strictly, like, soundbite rankings, maybe Dan yeah. would certainly be at <laughs> the top. number one, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the criteria, but take me through the thought process of having him at eight. Tommy Haley and Mike, I would love to play for a guy like Dan Campbell. I mean, just go back and look at the history of the Detroit Lions when he got there. 3-13 and 13 his first year. Team never, never wavered. 22, the 22 season. Tommy, they started off 1-6. And, and as a player, we know this. A, a lot of times when a team is going through trials and tribulations, adversity, a lot of times it can get ugly. A lot of times those words your coach has could fall on deaf ears. Well, it didn't in Detroit. They won 8 of the last 10 and almost got into the playoffs. So going into this year, the highest expectations, and they bust the door down. 12-5, and five, NFC Championship game. And honestly, Tommy, if not for probably the aggressive nature of Dan Campbell, they may have been playing in the Super Bowl. So this is a guy that I also love how he constructed his staff. It's all ex-players as coaches. And as players, playing for a guy that used to play the game that you played, it's so relatable. That coach knows what you went through. He knows what training camp is like. So I've been rooting for Dan Campbell and his staff because there's no other staff like it in the NFL. And I think owners will take notice of this and realize I need to have more ex-players on my team because guys really go and run through a brick wall. And then also Tommy Haley, any coach that's willing to do up-downs for you, and for people that don't know, that's like doing a burpee, <laughs> right? For any coach that's willing to do 100 up-downs before practice and training camp, that's the guy you want to play for. So I would love, again, to play for a guy like Dan Campbell. You saw what he's done since he's been there, right? 3-13, and 13, won eight of his last 10 and 22, 12-5 NFC Championship game. They have Super Bowl aspirations this year. I do think that the arrow is pointing out, and I do agree that Dan Campbell, what he does there is very impressive. But we're talking about number eight coach in the NFL, right? We're talking about putting McGov, some guys on this list that have won Super Bowls also that we're going to see. To me, if I'm apportioning who has led this turnaround, one, it's Brad Holmes. If I'm the GM for the Detroit Lions, if I'm ranking GMs, he's a top five GM wholesale. Two, it's Ben Johnson. If I'm ranking OCs in the NFL, Ben Johnson is top five OC. And so when you're not a play calling head coach on one side of football or the other, where you're just a leader of men, and he does that exceptionally well, it's just difficult for me, and especially in today's NFL landscape, to go to bat for that guy because the OC and DC, Aaron Glenn, Ben Johnson, can leave after this year, and then you can be scrambling on both sides of the football. So that's my worry with going just with a Dan Campbell at number eight this early on with really only one season to hang his hat on. But I do agree that the arrow is pointing upwards, and what he's done so far has been impressive. Well, Mike, what do you think about a guy like Mike Tomlin, who isn't essentially a play caller? Do you not have him as a top five coach? Well, that's the difference between, what, 15 years, 20 years almost of Tomlin and three years of Campbell, right? You know, it's just once he proves it, you know, once he loses that OCDC and keeps going, then then sure, he's there, top five, top ten, sure. But until that point, I am going to worry that maybe he's a product of some other great people in that build. Yeah, I 
To your point earlier, Lige, I too would run through a brick wall for Dan Campbell. I wish we could get him. Would you bite in, some kneecaps too? <laughs> to a, bite on some kneecaps. kneecaps. <laughs> I'm not into that. No, 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 no. Uh, but I do like the energy that he brings. I wish Mike McCarthy had a little bit more of that energy when we're talking about my Dallas Cowboys and what they have going on. Uh, it's a mess, guys. We all know that, right? But uh, when it comes to Mike McCarthy, it's interesting because this is a guy who has an incredible pedigree from a coaching yeah, standpoint. One of the most winningest coaches in the NFL. He's got a Super Bowl. And even in his time in Dallas, all but one of his seasons, he's finished with 12 wins. So, uh, Lige, I see you have him here on your list at number nine. I'm okay with that, but just talk us through uh, putting Mike there at that nine spot. Haley, the disrespect for Mike McCarthy Say needs it. to stop. Like it's it's I'm glad utterly, to have an ally today. it's <laughs> utterly ridiculous. My thing is the grass isn't always greener on the other side. So if you were to move on from Mike McCarthy, you better have somebody lying and, and waiting that is going to come in and have as much success as, as he did. Let's not forget Jason Garrett was there, and the Dallas Cowboys are going to the playoffs every other year. The last three years, there's only one coach that has more wins than Mike McCarthy in the regular season. You know who that is? That's the number one guy on my list, and. Reed. So some respect needs to be paid to Mike McCarthy. And I'll take it a step further. People forget when Kellen Moore left, Dallas already had an explosive offense. People were worried about Mike McCarthy play calling because he hadn't done it in so many years. Haley, you know what they did? They were the number one scoring offense in football say, yes, last year. Yes, I know what they did. People wonder would CeeDee Lamb be a true number one receiver? Well, with Mike McCarthy at the helm calling plays, CeeDee Lamb was a true number one receiver. Matter of fact, he might be a top three or four receiver in the league now that Mike McCarthy is calling the play. So I get people People saying in certain situational football aspects, he is not always at his best. But if you even go to that playoff game, that wasn't on the offensive side. The defense didn't show up. They almost gave up a 50 burger, 48 points. The offense still put up 32 points. So that's not on Mike McCarthy. And people will say, well, it's on the coach to get ready. Well, when you're losing at the line of scrimmage, I hate to tell you that. It's on the players. It's not on the coach. So the disrespect has to end for Mike McCarthy because the grass isn't always greener on the other side. If you lose him, who else are you going to bring in? I disagree with some of your takes on this list so far, but you're spot on with this one. Mike McCarthy is top 10 coach in the NFL. If you're the Dallas Cowboys fan begging to go elsewhere, you said the grass is not always greener. There may not be, and there likely won't be a candidate better than Mike McCarthy on the coaching market next off season. He had a top three offense in the NFL. He, he led Dak to his best season ever with, I think fairly objectively, probably not the best talent that Dak's ever had around him with that Dallas Cowboys team. And it's because he molded this offense to Dak's strengths. He really bought into the drop back passing game this past season, really changed it from what it had been in the Kellen Moore era. And they flourished. Top three offense in the NFL. Yeah, obviously you can point to the playoff record, but that's one game against one team. And as you said, the defense side of the ball was the reason why that game went so far south. So yeah, Mike McCarthy, if he's on the hot seat, it's really only because the Dallas Cowboys job is a pressure cooker, not because of anything he's done. So let's stay in the division, but go further down the list with Nick Sirianni, which what a difference a year makes. If we did this oh last year, it probably would be a lot higher, but that's the difference between Correct. 2023 and 2022 or 24, I should say here. So uh, take a look at Ligier's coaches from 11 to 15. Sirianni coming in at number 14. Tommy, life comes at you fast, doesn't sure it? Does. Right? If, if you look at Nick Sirianni, who would say a coach that's been to three straight playoffs appearances since he became the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles would be on the hot seat, right? You said it. If we go back to the season before, this team was one drive away from winning the Super Bowl, right? And he loses both corners. We talked about Kyle Shanahan earlier and how he's lost two defensive coordinators. Well, try losing both coordinators in the same year, right? He lost Jonathan Gallon on the defensive side. He lost Shane Steichen to the coach as a head coach. We knew that there was going to be an acclimation period, an adjustment period, right? But yet, even through, through all that, they started off 10-1 and one last year. So they were squeaking by winning games. It was ugly, but they were still winning football games. But it all came to a head. So... To me, I think some grace needs to be given to Nick Sirianni. I have him as low on this list because now it's truly his job to put things together, right? They have a new defensive coordinator, new offensive coordinator. Can he bring it back to where they were in 2022? That will be the question. He had some questionable changes last year, you know, putting Patricia in charge of the defense halfway through the season, and things got worse. So, like, as, as a head coach, that's your job to make sure the ship is running smoothly. At times, I don't think he made the best decision. That's why he is as, he is as low on my list, even though he's been the three 
three straight playoffs. But I think some grace has to be given because just like we were talking about Mike McCarthy, you have a coach that's gone to three straight playoffs. You're not just going to find that out on the streets. So I know Philadelphia fans are rabid, right, and they have a lot of energy there. But Nick Sirianni has taken your team to three straight playoffs three consecutive years in a row. Be careful. Again, the grass isn't always uh, greener on the other side. I will say, though, I would be worried if I'm an Eagles fan seeing the success of Shane Steichen in Indy going nine and eight last year with objectively not a ton of talent around him on that roster, a roster that lost their starting quarterback early on the season. No one expected it to go that well. And then seeing the Eagles offense take a step back, even though they brought back everyone, maybe even upgraded at running back with DeAndre Swift last year, maybe even had more talent offensively than they did the year prior and took a pretty sizable step back with a young quarterback that you would think should be taking steps forward, right? That to me is worrisome if I'm an Eagles fan that maybe Shane Steichen was the brains of this operation, at least on the offense side of the ball. Obviously there are reasons for the big step back on the defense side of the ball, but there really should not have been, especially when that's Nick Sirianni's side of the ball. So looking at kind of the direction both those coaches are going, it wouldn't surprise me if when we're making this list next year, Sirianni might be even lower, Shane Steichen might be even higher. Ooh, okay. Love that as an Eagle or as a Cowboys fan. And uh, if we <laughs> wrap up this top 15 from Lige, you have Sean McDermott there in the 15th spot from the Bills, who you do not have in your top 15 is Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel. Yeah. Understandable. He's still new in this league, still can't beat the Bills, still hasn't gotten that <laughs> playoff win. Uh, so this is the one I probably agree with the most, him being on the top 15, uh, j or outside of the top yeah. 15, but uh, just kind of what went into that. Yeah, and a lot of people got after me about that too, Haley. So we're here when it comes to that. Uh, my thing today. is, how can you be a top 15 coach with the talent and roster that you have and you have yet to win a playoff game? And we'll double down. Last year versus playoff teams, Haley, one and six. So they can't win against the top tier teams in the NFL. Love Mike McDaniel. Love the offensive mindset that he has. Love that he's so inventive on offense. But they have not been able to show up in the biggest of games. You talked about it. First and foremost, you got to be able to beat, beat your division rivals. And the Buffalo Bills have owned them since Mike McDaniel has been the head coach of the Miami Dolphins. And then if you look at it, the only playoff worthy team they beat last year was the Dallas Cowboys. And they barely skated away in that game as well. So to me, until you go Go out there and prove. When you look at all the rest of the coaches on this list, they all have playoff wins. I can't put a coach on this list that doesn't have a playoff win. To me, yes, I know the trajectory shows that he's a really good coach and he could make maybe win some playoff games down the road, but he has to do it to be on this list. To me, it's still an offensive driven league. And when you have an offensive mind as high end as Mike McDaniel has been, that's that's a top 10 coach in my opinion. To lead a top three offense with a average offensive line and Tua Tungavailoa, a quarterback that the previous head coach literally gave up on, you know, said was not an NFL starter. To put him in and to get him into being a MVP candidate this past season, and if he didn't really falter down the stretch, probably would have been. That to me is deserving of consideration on this list. I know a lot of teams, whether you're you know, the Washington Commanders, especially who you had Dan Quinn at 11. I think they trade for him in a heartbeat on the office, especially with Jaden Daniels, especially trying to develop a young quarterback like that. So to me, he's not only top 15, I'd put him in the top 10 on this. Wow, with no playoff wins. Hot take, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, Offense still wins, and they're I mean, not many better offensive minds. Probably two of the best receivers in the NFL as well, not to, not to minimize what he does, but he has the greatest weapon in the NFL in Tyreek Hill. No argument there. And, <laughs> but again, like he 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 assembled that offense Correct. with that and like he he covets that speed. That's why they traded for Tyreek Hill. That's why they drafted Devonta Chain. And that's why like it is so explosive, is that's his style. And so yeah, we'll see if it can succeed come January. But then some of that's also because to his arm is about as strong as mine oh my uh, God. come mid-January, and he couldn't throw the ball 10 yards down the football field. That's why. Mike on the show more often. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> I see Mike. Good Lord. Lists. Agree to disagree. <laughs> Highly subjective, but quite entertaining. Mike Lige, certainly appreciate it. Guys, thanks for chatting a little NFL here on HQ. Taking a look at the odds to win Coach of the Year at FanDuel, Jim Harbaugh is the betting favorite at 9-1, to one, followed by Raheem Morris and Matt Eberflush, co-second board members at 10-1, to one, and Mike McDonald in Pacific Northwest coming in with a cluster of guys at 20-1. to one.